A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip when they heard it and saw the signs that he was doing. For unclean spirits, crying out in a loud voice, came out of many possessed people, and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in the city. Now, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands upon them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope. But do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. be with you and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit a reading from holy gospel according to john glory, glory to you lord. lord jesus said to his disciples if you love me you'll keep my commandments and i will ask the father and he will give you another advocate to be with you always the spirit of truth whom the world cannot accept because neither sees nor knows him. But you will know him because he remains with you and will be in you. <coughs> I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you will live. On that day, you realize I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and serves them is the one who loves me. Whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. If you love me, who hasn't heard that before, if you love me or said it? But this week, as I was going and ready to prepare for the gospel this week, one of the words that really struck me the most, there was actually two words, but the word if. I figured I ought to go to the dictionary and really understand what that word meant because it does play a word does play a tough meaning in this gospel. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. You can take the word if in a lot of ways, but according to the dictionary, I just grabbed a few of them, it could be a test. In other words, if this happens, that will happen. Example, I like you, but you gotta buy me a candy bar. Or every time 
It can, every time this happens, something else will happen. Example, if you heat the water to 212 degrees, you'll have steam. It also can be used to make a polite request. You're going to use as a declarative statement. But I'm going to leave that word if to you toward the end and let you decide. If you love me. Think about some of the love that you've had in your life. For many, it might be their spouse, their husband or wife. After all, that is someone you chose, someone you selected from countless others, someone you promised to stand by, cherish, and love for the rest of your life. And for those of you who would still pick the same person if they met him today, what a wonderful feeling declaring to the world that this is the absolute love of my life. That is a great feeling, a wonderful reality to have present to a couple through many years. Loving a spouse gracefully and generously is one of the greatest gifts that we ever can receive and we have a gift we will be able to give. And if you're a parent, think about your child. You would do anything for them. You would sit by their bedside day after day if they were sick. You would search to the end of the world if they were lost. You would dry every tear and hold them in your arms for hours if they were sad. The truth is, loving our son or daughter is something that most parents have no control over. It's just that powerful. And for a child, it may be the parents, someone who did so much for you throughout the years. It could be your brother and sister, someone who shared a life with you as a young child and even as an adult today. Could be a friend, someone who knows you better than anybody else, someone you can always count on, someone that will always be there forever and ever. Well, another question that came up to me this week, what is love? Maybe it's a feeling, maybe it's the attraction, maybe it's chemistry. Love can definitely manifest itself in all those ways. But the real definition of love is that you want the absolute best for someone, enhancing the life of others, affecting the positive change in the world, not only around you, but the globe itself. It is the core of our being and who we are. We are pure love and it's a gift that will never run out. It's a gift from God that is given to us so we may be then give this gift of love to others. It is our truest nature. In today's gospel, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. The passage picks up from last week's reading where Jesus continues to deliver is farewell the course, preparing the disciples for his departure and the receipt of the Holy Spirit. In this John's Gospel, Jesus says many times over his favorite thing, love, the love of the Father, the love for us and our love for him. This passage begins and ends with love. Jesus declares, if his disciples love him, they will keep his commandments. Well, what commandments? The 10 that we know about? Or is it the one that he gave us where it says, I will give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I love you. You should also love one another. By this, everybody know that you are my disciples 
if you have one love for another. The ways we learned of Jesus' love was demonstrated in many ways. He served us. He healed us. He fed us as people. He encouraged us, nor he left us orphans. He blessed us and he prayed for us. And most importantly, the love of Jesus laid down his life for us on the cross. Now he says to us, now go and do the same thing. Love others as I love you. It's a great challenge. And it's not always easy to walk in the footsteps of Jesus in a road of love, trying to love as Jesus loved us. When Jesus says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. He is saying God's will is in his words and his commandments. In the new covenant we received on the birth of Jesus, God writes his commandments in our hearts. And that these commandments have to do with our inner life, not our auto circumstances. In this way, whether we are married or singled, no matter where we live, no matter what job we work, obedience towards Jesus' words shows the world we are his follower. Love is not an obligation, but it's a choice. Let me say that again. Love is not an obligation, but it's a choice between the two different individuals. If we love Jesus, we have to be constantly taking stock of our lives and asking, are we being faithful to his commandments? Are we doing everything we can as he asks us to do? Are we following his commandments? Everybody has their own abilities, which places him or her in different occupations, different settings, different geography places. But whatever situation you're in, you can still love one another. Living in gospel by, is no means an easy way. Or you just can't say, I love Jesus and leave it go at that. If living in gospel is done c- courageously, that is the way God wants us to do. If we are extravagant with our love, generosity, forgiveness, compassion, especially this time of pandemic, when all these qualities are urgently needed in abundance, to those around us will be staggered by the implications in our lives and their lives. Think how it impacts you when you see someone make a heroic decision, when you find it almost incredible that a human being could choose to be so selfishly. What if you lived in the footsteps of Jesus hour by hour? What could you do? How could you change the world? Now, more than ever, we need people who are work. Living that might only become the only reasonable response to those accustomed to being a Christian. Our behaviors require that we love one another, to always be there for one another, to always help one another, to always show them the best. By this, of course, we can always mean something different from mere following the rules. But being a Christian means that we're willing to help, to always do the things. Christian behavior includes everything from eating with the sinners, welcoming them, yielding our body to a cross, doing what's always right and what's always the best. To love someone, as I said earlier, is to always do the best for someone. That is what a Christian is. As I said before, Love is not an obligation, but it's a choice. 
a choice that you decide, a choice that I decide, a choice that we all decide someday. Now let me state it again. If you love me, what does that mean to you? Is it a test or is it a polite request from Jesus to always do what is right?